Razabani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have with me, looking a very trim, sharp looking Sam Jones. Sam, how are we? I don't know about trim, but I'm getting there. I am like, I'm, I'm, I'm on a health, a health program at the moment, trying to get, get, try and get rid, rid of this porkiness. How are you, Rob? How are you, bro? Listen, I'm telling you something now, piece of advice. I ain't going to go for a little while, right? In that fatherhood life, it's going to make you fatter and fatter for a little while. Trust no, me. No, it's not. Do you know why? Because it, it's, I can't have little energy like with, with a little baby. So I have to, have to, have to, have to stay healthy. Sam, I want to jump straight into it. Yesterday, Frank Warren, great show. Queensbury boxing back in uh, Birmingham. Good to see fans out as well. But I just want to jump out. Twitter went into an absolute meltdown yesterday. Akeem uh, Ennis Brown versus Sam Maxwell. Yeah. Great build-up, great fight. We knew it was going to be a great fight. Um, but it was let down by, unfortunately, poor judging. And I'm going to say it how, how it is once again. Um, just want to get your thoughts on it, firstly. Just, I, was, I was watching the fight and I thought, one, it, it, it was a horrible fight. Like, like, like uh, it, was, it's, it was an eye burner. It was not good for a fan to watch. It was, it was, it was boring. It just was, it was boring to watch. Um, but I was scoring the fight and Ennis Brown won the fight. Like he won the fight. Like I was, I was just, I wasn't shocked if I was honest, because I thought I did think even when, when he went to the final bell, I thought, could, could they, could they like, go against him here but I don't I just don't understand how it's like we discussed the other week about McKinson yeah and I'll use him as an example because I can't be um I can't uh be like two-faced I can't say one week or oh, his this stuff it, it was it's a similar thing thing with Ennis Brown like I don't really want to watch that type of boxing I like Ennis Brown though he's a he's a He's, he's, he's charismatic, isn't he? but it was boring. It was just boring to watch. But you can't punish someone for being, because they not, they're not fighting the way you want them to fight with like an aggressive way. Like it was, he, he, he boxed, he, he was very, el- listen, you've got to respect it. Like, 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 and the McKinson thing, like they're very elusive, they're elusive guys. And Ennis Brown last night, very elusive, literally like trying to punch confetti, like Sam Maxwell. Like it was, but you can't, just penalise someone because their style is not great on the eye, which it isn't, but he won the fight. Like, there's, there's, for me, there was no way he lost that fight. Like, they're just, it was, a, it was a shocking, shocking call, in my opinion. And the fact, it was unanimous as well. Like, it was a unanimous decision in Maxwell's favour. And fair, I mean, I just think, I thought he won by a landslide, Ennis Brown, a complete landslide. Like, like, oh, like, like I thought Maxwell, like he won a two, three rounds. I thought, I thought Ennis Brown won clear as day. I really did. Um, and now, because of that, not only Ennis Brown's on the end of a, a bad decision, but we're going to unfortunately have to see that fight again because I think there's a rematch clause in it. So, I mean, fucking hell, like. It's just another. It's not. It's not one I'm going to be looking forward to see. But it, again, I, I feel for Ennis Brown because he, he won the fight. But now all the fans are unfortunately going to fucking see have to endure that fight again. How detrimental is it to fighters' career? You're a manager. You have got many fighters. If your fighter gets the wrong end of a stick, such as last night, what what should we be able to do? Because in reality, in the past, Terry O'Connor, when he's got things wrong, he just justifies why he scored it a certain way and that's it he moves on and he gets I, 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 again. I was I was I was talking to Adam Catchell on, on the fight disciples thing I think that every judge should have to justify what they should all have to file a report why they scored the fight like that because in boxing it's like Florian Florian got that terrible decision but it was a draw so so it's like it wasn't so detrimental but it's still a stain on his record that shouldn't be there like like it was a terrible performance that night, but he won the he won every round. Do you know what I mean? Like it was just a horrendous decision. But in boxing, it's not like tennis where you can play the Australian Open, get put out in the first round, then the then the month after you can you can perform in the US Open and 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 have the chance to re- resume your career. In boxing, you get like Ennis Brown now. You got to understand who the hell who the in the I mean, I know he's got this rematch clause whether that's going to happen or but who the fuck's going to want to fight Ennis Brown like he's just going to be stuck, not, no thanks I'm not I don't, you're not going to choose to fight him are you it's as simple as that and like 
he, he, he's unfortunately because his style is not a pleasing style. It's going to affect him. That loss is going to affect him probably more than most. But as I say, he deserves the rematch, but not that we all want to see it, but he deserves it. But in boxing, it's not like that. It's not like tennis. It's not like football where you can go and put it right the week after and get three points. It can really fuck your career up. And I just, there just needs to be more transparency in boxing than that. What's like, I know everyone, because everyone's like, oh, it's what you like and oh it's, it's it's what this guy likes it should just be about what's fact do you know what i mean it should just be about he's hit him more times and he's hit the other guy cleanly and that should be or it should just be more transparency in boxing because it's because things like last night is bollocks like like he just him, this is my opinion he just didn't he sat maxwell who is the nicest guy in the world he just didn't win that fight not in a not in a million month for sundays did he win that fight I know, I know it's all good me talking about it and you answering those questions, but do fighters, do fighters team and fighters themselves have to be more open and discussive with the result? Like Ennis uh, Akeem did an interview yesterday with IFL with Uma and he said, well, it is what it is and, and I want the rematch, but should he be more vocal? Should he make a stance and say... The thing, is, the thing is, the thing is, what does it matter? It's like with Florian. I said Florian was like, oh, let's file a report. Let's do this. Let's do and I said, listen, Florian, it's easy for me to say, but I said, Ryan, you have to just, we have to get on with it because th there's no overriding governing body. There's the, there's, there's the, the, the board of control, which they, they do a great job, but like you, you, they're the judge and the jury. So what can, what can anyone do? What, what, what can you do? They're not going to like, it's, 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 it's too, it, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know, but all I know for things like that, fighters have got to have more protection. Like, I just believe that the judges should, especially on decisions like that, go from round one to round 12 and explain to Akeem Ennis Brown in a room why he lost that fight. That's my opinion, what they should do. They owe him that. I feel like it's a never ending story. I don't think it's going to go in until something actually is in place and yeah, agree. It's, it's rectified. I just don't think it's going to go away. We, we do this. Every, every six months, Sam, we're having a discussion about... There are decisions yeah. that are close. There are decisions that could go either way, but then there are clear, outright robberies, just like we saw last night. And again, no disrespect to Sam Maxwell, but it's not going to go in. And I, I guarantee you another six months' time, I mean, you're going to have the same conversation about another fight. This is what I mean. Like, I feel sorry for... Like, you feel sorry for Sam Maxwell as well, because Sam Maxwell, like, he's, a, he's a proud guy. Like, he, he'll be looking at social media thinking... He had a great night. So I think he proposed to his girlfriend. He won the British title. Should be the best night of his life. And then he's looking, scrolling through social media and seeing people. Like, I bet he'll be getting people hammering him on the in inbox. You know, boxing fans are, oh, you lost, you lost that fight. And then it's really like, it's not his fault. It's not his fault that he, that he got the. Uh, because, I mean, it, his coach mentioned. Um, I think his coach said, oh, yeah, you, you win. You, I don't know, you were ahead or something. I'm like, I must be watching something completely different to what anyone else is. is what I mean, I was glad because listen, I'm not an expert. I'm just I, I, I'm I, I'm involved in boxing. I love boxing, but it doesn't make me an expert. I just have an opinion, like every other, like every other person. I like like to think I know myself, but I was watching it, and then when Frampton was saying, I'm in disbelief because I was in disbelief as well. But in the same time, I was watching it thinking. When the scores come in, when they were taking a while, I was thinking, hold on a second, they're not going to do this, are they? Oh, wow. And then unanimous decision, I kind of thought, ah, they, and then Ennis Brown's won this. Like, yeah. And then when they, when they gave it, the match went, I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. It's a, it's a, that, it was a, that was a stinker. Um, so I'm just moving away. Uh, some other great fights on the show. Uh, just some quick fire questions. Woodstock, Kakache. Uh, Kakashi obviously got the victory, unanim unanimous decision. Uh, impressed? Yeah, I was really impressed with Kakashi. I mean, I, I really like Leon Woodstock, and I wish his corner would have pulled him out the fight a lot. Uh, would have pulled him out the fight. He was taking a hiding, an unnecessary hiding in there. Um, uh, yeah, I would like to have seen him pulled out the fight. I didn't. I know it's like, oh, see to the final bell, but why? Why take extra punishment? He's the sting was out of going out of Woodstock shots. He was getting beat up. I didn't like to see him, see him in there. I'm not a trainer. I've never been put in that position. But if I was that guy, I would have pulled Leon straight out of the fight at, at, at three, four rounds before the end because he was just taking an unnecessary pasting. 
Anthony Yard back in the ring, um, got the victory. Uh, obviously, would have been nice to see a few more rounds from Anthony, but he got the victory. What did you make of, firstly, the opponent uh, that Anthony and his team chose? It's bollocks, to be honest with you. Um, I just thought it was bollocks. I think, like, what's the, he's been out in the ring for, for a long time. You come in out, just spar, spar hard rounds. Like, like again, like, what, that, that there, you wouldn't employ that guy to come and spar you. You, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you, there's no way, like, you're not paying that guy to spar, like, like what I tweeted, if you would have found one of the pissed up Stokies in the crowd last night and dragged him in the ring, he'd have put up more of a fight than what that guy did with Anthony Yard last night, what's he gaining out of that, it's just, just me, me looking in, like, like, that's not going to prepare you for Lyndon Arthur, that's not going to help you work on the things you've been working on with, with, like, with Tunde, and James Cook, I really like Tundi. I get on with him really well, but like, I, I just, I call it as I see it. Like, I just thought it's bollocks. Like, what? Why would a, a class fighter like Anthony Yard fight somebody like that? Like this in this way in his this in his career, at least fight somebody durable that's going to give you two to three rounds or or three four three four rounds or somebody with a light bit of ambition that's going to come and have a go at you. Because how's that going to prepare you for Lyndon Arthur? How's that going to prepare you for? A, a, a jab going in, in, in your face like, like for, for up to 12 rounds That's, I just think it was a strange decision like and listen if, if that's what they needed to do but knocking over a, a chap like that in, in 30 seconds it's hardly worth get, getting on the getting on the train to Birmingham from, from, from London for that isn't there really yeah, in, in, in respect to Anthony, obviously, he, he did say that he shouldn't have even really been in the ring last year against Lyndon after the year, tragedies and yeah, unfortunate shocking, things yeah. that he went through last year. Um, and, and he did say that this fight wasn't a preparation for Arthur. This fight was a fight that I just needed to get out and just almost like just get used to the ring again and the fans and the spotlight before Arthur. But it wasn't a prep for Arthur is what he meant. I was in there for 30 seconds. I, listen, I don't manage Anthony Yard. They've done a, no one can ever say Anthony Yard's not been promoted correctly or managed correctly. He's been unbelievably uh, promoted, Anthony Yard. He's had hardly, he's had 11 amateur fights. He boxed for a world title. He's a global ambassador for Adidas. He's made loads of money. He's been managed unbelievably and promoted unbelievably. I just think that, but, if, but when you look at the facts, his best win to date is against Dex Spellman. That's his best win. That, that, that's just his best win. He's been in with Kovalev. Arthur, but his best wins Dex Spellman. I just think he needed, like Lyndon Arthur, that that Italian fella, Lyndon Arthur fella. That's that was a that was a proper fight. Lyndon won, but it was still a proper fight with someone with ambition. That's the type of thing that Yard needed, in 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 my in my opinion. Just to find but, a final few quick ones. Uh, obviously, big news coming out. Obviously, the AJ card got released. Uh, Marku against Prodown. Uh, Prodown obviously undefeated, but. It's static for Marco to be on this huge, huge card. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was pushing for it. I was, I was pushing when, when the when Throne rolled his ankle. It was only minor. With I thought straight away, I was thinking, wow, that card's coming up soon. Let's try and get him on that. So shout out to Freddie Cunningham, uh, David, and uh, and two five eight, and and obviously Eddie. That was it's a great show for Florian to to be on, and uh, Anthony Joshua as well. Like so. We're, we're very grateful because it's a massive, massive platform. Uh, the Albanians have been on uh, the ticket resale and they've, they've, they've purchased a load of tickets. There's going to be a load of Albanians in there. Um, so, yeah, it's an exciting night. Fight week's approaching us. Laura, Warrington. Is this do or die for Warrington, Sam? Yeah, of course. Well, it's a must win for Warrington. I think he's going to win. I'm going there as a fan. I've not been to a box event as a fan for ages and I can't wait to go. There's so many good fights. Ben Granadas is going to be a good fight. Um, Katie Taylor's on there, like watching Katie Taylor and the main event, great atmosphere. I can't wait to go. And just the final one, uh, announced obviously this week, the WVA are trying to bin their interim titles or they're attempting to get rid of the interim titles and order the regular champions to fight the former interim champion, etc. Then for that person then to fight eventually the super champion, but it's a start. Uh, yeah, I mean, boxing needs less belts. They, 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 it they, they just needs less belts. So listen, fair play, fair play to Gilberto Mendoza for, for for stepping up and doing that because they they've come under a lot of criticism. So fair play to him. Uh, finally, I know it's the final one, but it's the final final one. Uh, Jake Paul, yeah, <laughs> Woodley. 
what's going to happen? Yeah, he's coached by my, by my friend BJ Flores. BJ so like, Flores. I, can't, I want him to win. For, I want him to win because he's coached by my friend. But Jake Paul, I've never met him. He's a he's a he's a he's a marketing genius, isn't he? But I mean, the logical thing you'd think Tyrone Woodley, the world class fighter that he was or is, should be a YouTuber. But Jake Paul's. You saw, well, Ben Askren, I thought that guy the last time, I thought he was like a crab, a human crab. Like, he was so terrible. But Tyrone Woody looks slightly up for this fight, so he looked in great shape. Who knows, man? Who knows? I won't be fucking paying for it, though. That's for damn certain. <laughs> Sam Jones, uh, IFL TV, thank you very much. Nice one, bro. Yeah.